Whether you are having it as a processed product or in its natural form, the pineapple is one delicious fruit that is enjoyed by many people around the world. With a bright yellow color, the pineapple fruit is not only delicious but rich in nutritional and health values. The pineapple fruit is rich in vitamin C, a weight loss enhancer, helps in digestion and inflammation, boosts eyesight and above all, it is easily affordable and easy to serve. Coming up on Seeds of Gold. We are now organizing this part for root development. Because if you had left everything when it is covered, it would be difficult for the roots to develop. Lynette Ankunda Akol is a woman entrepreneur and a managing director for Crystal Ice Uganda. She took on the value chain industry after resigning from the former sector. She started fruit ice pop business after realizing that there was a gap to make use of the fruits that we are finding no market, especially at the peak season. Her strategy was to target farmers from the grassroots and work with them as fruit suppliers. One of such groups is the Kangulumira Area Cooperative Enterprise involved in organic pineapple farming. We are into value addition. We add um, value to fruits where we, whereby they are processed to make um, frozen treats which we call uh, ice pops. Um, and these are the ice pops we bake. They are in six different flavors. So we have apple, mango, orange, pineapple, mixed fruit, and uh, watermelon. Um, came up with a business idea that um, could use a model that serves communities. Um, a business that would have an, a positive impact. And people will be able to empower, inspire, and um, also promote income uh, generating opportunities. So after doing my work at um, URI, and um, I, of course I went with my idea, I presented it to them, told them exactly what I wanted to, to, to make, go with the prototype. So I did that, I took it to uh, uh, URI and then now they did like perfecting the product, product development basically. So when we did that, um, of course then I said, now this is the time to start working with uh, smallholder farmers because I'd noticed the problem of um, fruit waste and uh, I wanted to come up with a solution that um, could increase the, the shelf life of fruits and also um, improve the availability of uh, perishable products on the shelf. With a total of 28 member groups, Yahaya Wafana is the chairman of Kangurumira Area Cooperative Enterprise, an umbrella organization bringing together farmers from Kangurumira sub-county, Kayunga district. Among the lucrative farming enterprises they venture in is the organic pineapple farming, which they produce for markets such as crystal ice on a large scale. Mainly Kangurumira is well known for pineapple growing. We want at least to get a a good variety of pineapple it's just within our area here, Kangulumira. So, the reason why we came up with selecting pineapple as our major enterprise, most of the members, most of our members are engaged in pineapple growing. So, being with three enterprises, we selected pineapple as our major enterprise. Kayunga district is one of the regions in Uganda best known for pineapple farming. Other regions include Luero and Western Uganda. This is because of the conducive environment. Pineapples grow well with drained fertile sandy loam soils. The soils should be rich in humus with a pH range of 4.5 to 5.5, a moderate rainfall and good sunlight with no shade. Need to know about the spacing, the variety. Because not all what you see is that should be grown as pineapples. We have to look for at least a variety to grow. Also look, look at the texture of land, like soil. Because it's, it's not meant that everywhere you see land, you should just grow what? Pineapples. Pineapples have specific areas to be grown too. If we talk about soil, uh, loam soil does well. Uh, like a partly Sunday, that one can also do. 
but the best is so long. Yeah. Then, like the, the weather, maybe tropical, like a tropical environment. That one can match. Then also, we also need to study about diseases because we are, we are also disturbed with some diseases. So you need to learn more about that. Pineapples grown in Uganda are basically of three varieties, which are smooth cayenne. It is by far the most cultivar throughout the tropics. Queens, the cultivar is smallest and sweeter than the cayenne. The red Spanish, it is a semi-spineless cultivar. Its fruits are intermediate of smooth cayenne and red Spanish. We have three different uh, varieties, but they also they are grown um, basically depending on the, the, the specific areas. So here where we are, we are involved in growing smooth cayenne. And that is, I should say, that, that, that's the best type of pineapple we should grow. Then we have the French, the Baganda Sebu Faranza, something like that. Those ones are hard to plant, they are hard, but then they are sweet to eat, but the size is somehow small. Then if you, they are also thorny. So during planting and during weeding, there's a problem with those ones, the French. Pineapples are planted using the propagation method. This can be done using either of these three ways. Suckers. These are offshoots and take about 17 months to fruit. Slips. These are undergrowing of a pineapple plant and they take about 20 months to fruit. Crowns. This is the top spike or leafy part of a pineapple. It takes about 22 to 24 months to fruit. The gestation period of a pineapple will therefore depend on the type of propagation you use. A sucker, this is a sucker. It just develops from down part. This is the mother, the stem is the mother, and just down, the sucker will develop. So I will just remove this. You see, I removed this. This was the, the, the fruit. It's where the fruit was. So I removed the fruit. And now this is the sack. This is the good quality. This is the quality to plant. So this is a sack. Now, we also have, we have also these ones growing on site. You see, these ones, however much you feed them, they will not grow up to this size. These are slips. They will remain like this. They don't go. They don't go up to this size. But some people plant. But for somebody who is organic, really, really, somebody who knows that pineapple planting is a business, at least you need to plant this. Can also be planted as a, in the form of a sucker. But then it will take long also to mature. Those one will take 15 months. This one can take something like 18. So you have to, to make sure that at least you wait. And also feeding. The, the fertilizers you will use, feeding those ones, it will not be the same like these ones. You need to feed them for so long. So that's the only difference. Although they will also produce fruits, but the fruits which are going to be produced, they will not be like those ones from a, a, a real sucker. So this is a crown. That one is the sucker, that one is the seed, the sleep. The mother plant, this mother plant will continue producing. It's just a matter of, 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 of removing weeds to, uh, you see in between we have coffee asks here. These are the, 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 the fertilizers we used. Now, the nutrient within, to also get used. Then after that, like that, like that, this one also will stop producing what? The, 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 the pineapples. After four years, four to five years. That's why some people, when they hire land like this, 
people hire a land for six years. But if you hire land and you are going to plant their pineapples and use something, you, you say you are going to spend there something like, like four, four, four years, you might end up, you might move away, or the period will end up when at least fruits are still there and even the matoke are there. So what you do, make sure that at least you end up seven years, eight years later yeah, if you want to hire land. Planting, these are the requirements followed. Pluck the sucker or crown from the mother plant. Keep for two weeks to allow the downer part to dry or cure. Alternatively, the crowns can be trimmed to remove the fruit tissue high in sugars and then dipped in a fungicide for direct planting. A spacing of two feet that is 60 centimeter between the rows, one feet 30 centimeters between the plant and 4 feet 120 centimeter between adjacent double rows. Apply organic fertilizers such as coffee husks or manure if you are an organic farmer. These are the suckers. They are now ready for planting. After harvesting them from, from, from the mother plant, you have to put them somewhere the rest for three weeks at least. We are supposed to reduce this. We are now organizing this part for root development. Because if we had left everything when it is covered, it would be difficult for the roots to develop. So that's why I remove some here like this. This hole is supposed to be at least half a foot. I handle it like this. When I'm planting, I have to handle it like this. Then after, after planting, I have to make it that it's really firm with just within the hole. Then I, have, I must make sure that I don't allow soil to fall just within, in between the there. Because if I allow soil to fall there, it will not grow. From there, I will wait for something like, like, a, like a five months. Then I apply there what? The coffee husks. Then I continue weeding. I also wait for 15, 16 months. Then I will start harvesting. Pineapples will take between 15 to 24 months before harvest, depending on the method a farmer applies. They are planted in a space with no shade to allow them access a good amount of sunlight for proper growth. However, after the first and second harvest, it is advisable to introduce intercropping such as bananas to utilize the available space. More and more Ugandan farmers are finding it more advantageous to produce organic foods. This is because organic is fast marketable and more profitable. Before becoming an organic farmer, however, you need to follow a process. First of all, one, uh, your soil must be satisfied. There are those people who are supposed to uh, satisfy organic farmers. They will come and look at the, the soil texture, look at how the soil is. What did you apply? What, what are you applying in your farming? So basically in organic, you need to go away with this whatever, the, 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 the herbicides like that. Those chemicals, we don't apply chemicals. Yeah, that's, that's for organic. Then those ones in organic in transaction or organic in conversion, we, we are using these as, 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 as fertilizers. These are coffee husks. But you will find somebody, instead of applying coffee husks, we just bring a, a certain herbicide, start spraying. 
because these are costly. If you want to pass through a shortcut, that's how you can use those ones, those are the hubs. So that's one thing. Somebody can identify that these are. Okay. Then also, uh, if you look at the size, also, yeah, organic pineapples. The way they look, even the fresh, I mean the, the fruit itself. It, 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 you look at it, it, it looks like a, a real, a real fruit, fruit, which is healthy. Hmm? At least. But with these ones which have been applied on with some, can, can, some chemicals, we find some, some other areas they have been burnt because of the, 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 what, the effects of, 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 of chemicals. When ready to harvest, the pineapple will turn yellow on the exterior, make a simple twist to harvest the fruit. When readily harvested, the pineapple can be eaten fresh or used to process a number of products and used as a recipe in the culinary section. For instance, pineapple makes a great addition to recipes for meats, vegetables and salads. Better still, you can have it for a fresh glass of pineapple juice. Or you can choose to enjoy it as a crisp when well dried and packaged. I'm now washing. So after that, comes to peeling. I make sure that I don't leave there the eyes. These are pineapple eyes. Because if you leave them during drying, they will indicate black spots. So after that, I'm supposed to remove this. Uh, these are the... With, with this one is what we do. Since our members are animal keepers, and they keep animals like cows, pigs. So these ones are taken back to the farmers for animal feeding. Pineapples are sliced in two different ways. We have these ones in a round form, we have those ones in a quarter way, we have those ones in three quarters. So it depends on what the buyer is in need. If the buyer would like the round one, we we'll just cut them like this. That's how the way we remove the center part. You take to the, to the dryer. Two days, or one and a half, the other dryer takes one and a half day for drying. The, the, wooden, the wooden ones take two days. Evening hours, you come and you remove. You bring everything inside here, you remove the dry, you also sort. Because during drying, some get broken. After that, you come to parking. You park. We use these ones as packing materials. These are packing materials which are given to us by the company. Fruits of the Nile, Jacana, Flona, Trophopi, Amavi, as I talked about. So those ones will just come in with their packing materials. They give me, we pack everything. Then after packing, if it was me to pack them, when I'm going to sell them, Without passing through the, 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 those companies, I could chop, just pack them like this. Pack them like this. Uh, this is a package of one kilogram. This is a package of 500 kilograms. Uh, grams. So it depends. We can even pack them at a 250 grams. So that's the label we are using. Uh, these products we are taken to the National Bureau of Standards for testing. Our pineapples were taken, they were testified. We are given that standard mark. Only one thing is that they should mark. Now everything has been changed. They don't issue standard marks. They only give what? Chuma. Yeah, they, they just give chuma. Yeah, yeah. They don't give this. So they are giving out. Uh, this one here, when it's packed here like this, I'm selling it at 17. Uh, when I packed this, I sell it at 20,000. This is a half a kilo, it's 8,500. And if you had a chance of coming here, you can buy this one at 15,000. This is our juice extracting machine. 
and she's doing ice, which is a product from pineapple. She's making everything from where company. There is a machine here. What are we going to do? I'm saying I'm very happy. Want to put up, want to join the, the, the understanding such that we can develop something which is at least of good quality. So we are going to use this machine, I know, for pulping juice. Then instead of making everything from Kampala, at least she will be coming to buy our, our, our pulped juice from what? From pineapple. Then she goes and maybe she does something. The other one is, is, is a, a juice pasteurizer. Before, before taking it, we have to boil it. That one is a wine juice pasteurizer. We wanted to separate the two. The, 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 the juice for making wine and the juice for, me, for, 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 for other drinks. So, the other small one, I know we are going to use that one. After pulping juice, this, juice from here, we shall boil it, then she, she comes and take it. That's how we are going to do the business. As an entrepreneur, Lynette has chosen to add value to the pineapple through making enjoyable ice pops, a venture she does not regret. We've got in, um, customers who have asked whether our products are organic. So when I met Lorraine, she, she told me that uh, she has those groups of people, of farmers who are dealing in um, organic products. So we got in touch, so she took me to those people. I went and met them person and they also liked the idea. So now we are going to be working with them. The aggregator has been buying from them and distributing but with time as we scale we want to be buying now. We want to be dealing with uh, the farmers directly. We are still trying to get an agronomist actually to help us with um, the right varieties to use but like I said for, for pineapple we know we are using um, uh, smooth cayenne. For mangoes, we use um, what they call kagogwa. I don't know the name in English. Yeah, so this is the foot bath. Before people enter the production room, they have to disinfect themselves. So you have to go through the foot bath and you enter the production room. So the whole process starts with um, fruit procured. So when the fruits get here, they, they are checked for non-conformances. For example, you look at the skin of the fruit, does it have cuts? You look at the fruit, is it, um, is it very ripe? Because we buy up, uh, we want to use fruits which are ripe. And then we look at, um, we, we try to look for pathogenic microorganisms on the fruits which can contaminate the fruit. So when the fruits pass the test, then, um, uh, then we also check to see whether they could be rotten. Because sometimes, you know, the fruits get here and when you cut them you find they are rotten. So when they pass that test, they are washed and then they are peeled. So after peeling the fruits, we extract the pulp and um, it is done from here. Yeah, so after extraction, uh, we sieve, we sieve the, the, the pulp and um, we, we move to the, the pulp is put in the pasteurizer. So this is the pasteurizer. This is the mold for the, for the pops. So what is here now? This is pineapple pulp. So, so now he's just going to put the sticks that uh, are going to hold the pops when they, they're formed. So he, he's going to put them in the mold and then we shall get the mold and put it in the popsicle machine and then the ice forming will start. This is the popsicle machine. Okay, so yeah, so this is the component that freezes. It's um, a fast freezing machine. Our engineer is not around now to give you like the details on how the machine operates, but yeah, basically. So this is the one that forms the ice now, the, the ice pops. For us to produce um, 1,000 pops, we need um, at least fruits of between 200 and 300,000. So this is uh, part of the storage room. 
you can see it is, it is small. That's why I was telling you about the cold room. So I need a cold room for the raw materials. I need a cold room for the final products. Through hard work and using her dream to empower farmers and women, Lynette has achieved so much, including a number of awards. Among these are and winning the Rising Woman Award organized by Nation Media Group, she has used this to her advantage and is not looking back. I believe in myself. I believe my proposal was very good. I believe I had a very good product I could talk about. I had a product that um, um, had the why and, and I, I'd seen a problem. I wanted to, I, I saw a problem and I came up with a solution. And I was able to sell my vision to to the, to the judges and I, I think they also believed in me and I went with my product actually. I showed it to them, they tested it, not even test, but um, at least it was proof that I'm not just talking, the product is there, yeah. Uh, some of the supermarkets were requesting for freezers because um, our competitors now have gotten to know about us so they don't want to put our product in their freezers. So, so the money I got from the Tony El Miro Foundation helped me to get more freezers for storage here at the plant and uh, we've also been able to supply some freezers in supermarkets which now helps us now um, improve on the visibility of the products in the supermarkets. For many women, Lynette Ankunda Akol is a vivid example that any dream can be birthed out of a simple idea. All you need is a passion and hard work. So what are you waiting for? Let's bring the gold out from the farm.